This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be talking about a method called method caller. And this comes from the operator module. So from operator, we're going to import method caller. And the reason I found out about this was because not so long ago, I made a video about item getter, which also comes from the operator module. And these methods are just really cool. So now I want to share with you what method caller does. And to get started, we're going to create a list of names of type string. And it's going to contain Bob, James, Billy, Sandra, and Blake. And what we want to do is filter it. We're going to try to filter it by all the names that start with B. So right below that, I'm going to be using the method caller to call a string method on each one of these names. And we're going to call this one starts with B. And that's going to be of type method caller since when we use the method caller, it returns a method caller object back. But inside here, what you want to do is insert the method that you want to call on the type of object that you want to call it on. For example, here we're going to be working with strings. So what we want to insert here is a method that's compatible with strings, such as starts with. And if you're curious about which methods you can use with strings, just type in stir and use dot notation and you'll see a lot of string methods. So you just want to make sure that you select one that is valid and right after that, you get to pass in the arguments for that method. And here we want to check for names that start with B. So kind of like with currying or with the partial functions that you get from func tools, we are solidifying all of this information into a single method caller. And with that, we're now going to create a filtered object, which will be of type filter. And that's going to filter all the names that start with B on our names list. And of course, to see the results, we need to convert the filtered object to a list. So here we'll type in list and insert our filtered object. And what we should get back are three names that start with B. And we can also use this example with sorted. For example, we can try to count all the A's in each name and return a list sorted by the amount of A's in each name. So count A of type method caller is going to equal a method caller that uses the count method and inside each string, we're going to count the occurrence of A. Then we can print that it is sorted. And what we're going to pass down here is the list of the sorted names. And the key is going to equal count A. So it's going to apply this method caller to each one of our strings. And when we run this one more time, we're going to get them sorted by the amount of A's in each one of these names. So Billy and Bob contain zero, James and Blake contain one, and Sandra contains two. So it sorted them in an increasing order. Now you're probably asking, just like you asked in the item getter video, why don't we just use a Lambda here? Well, there are actually two reasons not to use a Lambda. First, the Lambda syntax can be quite confusing in certain scenarios, although that's not really a good reason. That could be seen as a potential reason not to use a Lambda. Second, from what I understood in the comments, using both the method caller and the item getter from the operator module is much faster than using the Lambda expression. And I actually did a few tests to try to confirm that. So I'm going to show you exactly what I did. And of course, if I did anything wrong in my tests, please let me know in the comment section down below. But for now, I'm going to get rid of these two lines. So we have some space and I'm going to insert the tests. And the first test or the first snippet of code I'm going to run is a warm up just to get the interpreter up to speed. Then I have the method caller test that uses the method caller with all the names. And I have the Lambda test that uses the Lambda equivalent with all the names, both inside the filter function. And to actually perform the tests, I'm going to import or actually from time it, I'm going to import the repeat function. And at the bottom, what I want to do is first perform the warm up. And it's going to run this statement 1 million times, and it's going to repeat that test five times. And that's going to be returned as a list. So whatever was the fastest time out of those five times, 
we're going to grab that using the built-in min function. But we don't really care about that result. That's just to warm up the interpreter. What we actually care about is the method caller time and the lambda time. So we're doing the exact same thing we did with the warmup, but with the actual functions. So here we're using repeat with the method caller test. So we're running that 1 million times and we're repeating this test five times. And if you're curious about where I'm getting all those numbers from, you can just hover over repeat and you'll see that the default for repeat is set to five and the default for number is set to 1 million. Then of course we want to get the fastest time. So I'm calling min on this repeat function. And we're doing the exact same thing for the lambda time. Then all the way at the bottom, I'm going to print the method caller time and the lambda time. And when we run this, what you should see is that the method caller time was slightly faster than the lambda time. And actually, I really don't like how this looks like. I might actually round this a bit. So what I'm going to do, I believe we can do this dot two F or actually three F. And this is when the F string formatting syntax really becomes quite ugly. And there we go. Now it looks much cleaner and it's much easier to read. As you can see, the method caller time was slightly faster than the lambda time. So that could be one of the reasons you would want to use method caller or item getter over a lambda expression. But as always, I encourage you to test both approaches in your own code base and to never trust optimizations blindly from the internet without testing it in your own code. But at the end of the day, if you're not running your script millions of times, pick the option that is most readable for you. All I wanted to do was share with you that something like method caller existed because I think it's quite cool. And I don't know how I went so long without realizing all of this stuff existed in the operator module. So I'm just very excited to share that stuff. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below whether you found anything to be particularly interesting or whether you have any information to add on top of this. But otherwise, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.